everybody, this is Mike with On Point Preparedness. I wanted to give a little bit of commentary on my last video. You had me at Illuminati and give you some real life examples and real life dangers as it applies to what I talked about in here. Now, if you haven't seen the video, I'm going to put a link up in the top right corner of the video if you want to click that. But in a nutshell, I talk about how we as Christians who know the times that we're in, the end times, we're on the internet researching, we're going to come across Illuminati symbolism decoded stuff, we're going to come across conspiracy stuff, we're going to come across end times prophecy, and the fact of the matter is, it's not always Christians that are producing the material, nor is it only Christians that are interested in this material. And so if your focus is only on these things and is not Christ-centered, and you really understand the nature, deity, and character of Christ, you can be led astray because you find yourself in fellowship with all these people that are either A, not Christian at all, or B, they claim to be Christian, but they have a radically different view on who Jesus is, a false Christ. So here's just a couple examples of where your mind can be really led astray. The first two are really when the villain becomes the hero. So this first one's Michael Jackson. Now, if you don't know the story, I believe his doctor who was treating him for all sorts of ailments, his personal doctor, I guess, gave him too much medication. And so they said that basically he was suicided. And so there was all these articles like this one. Michael Jackson told his son, they're going to kill me. There is this other article where they all say the Illuminati murdered Michael Jackson. Um, shock claims that the star was killed off. And you start getting into these wild conspiracies that basically Michael Jackson was trying to expose the Illuminati or was trying to expose pedophilia rings. And it actually makes him, who is a villain, into a hero. I mean, here's, here's what it ultimately comes down to. This is off of Disclosed TV. Michael Jackson tried to warn us about the Illuminati. So he's trying to save us. He's trying to really get the word out, and he should be applauded for what he did. He sacrificed his life. He's a martyr, a saint. <laughs> and I'm not embellishing with those comments. I mean, just check out this other website. It says, Michael Jackson took on the martyr's mantle once worn by Princess Diana. But what we really know about Michael Jackson is that he was in the thick of it. I mean, there was this new documentary that came out, which was talking about how he tried to force little boys to marry him on his Neverland ranch. And, you know, we don't even need to talk about that. We know how disturbed and how ungodly Michael Jackson really was. But again, if you're really not focused on Christ, you're only focused on the conspiracy at hand, it actually turns him into a hero. Here's another one, Anthony Bourdain. The official story is that he committed suicide, but then naturally all these conspiracies start coming up saying, was he trying to expose an elite pedophilia ring? And others like this YouTube video, which has nearly a million views, saying that Anthony Bourdain was trying to expose the Illuminati. And so again, just like Michael Jackson, he was suicided. He becomes a martyr. He becomes a quote-unquote saint. People are saying, wow, you know, he was really trying to get the word out to us, and he died for it. But the truth of the matter is that Anthony Bourdain, and I, I did look into him a little bit, is probably one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen in terms of the elite. Uh, there's things that I'm not even going to share at all with you, because just again, based on my prior video, it is shameful to even speak of these things, let alone show them. But it's highly likely that he was involved in cannibalism, and that may have been of young children. I mean, just terrible, terrible things. Um, really disturbing things. And so this guy is not good. Even if he was trying to expose people, he's basically just trying to bring them down with him. And essentially, you got videos like this that are propping him up as a hero, and it's terrible. And so here's the godly lesson out of all these things. If you've got two gangbangers that are trying to murder each other and one gang member really gets the upper hand and he just brutally murders the other one, even when the other guy is pleading for mercy and everything, um, you know, human tendency might feel pity for the person that died. 
especially if he had definitively lost the fight and was pleading for mercy and the guy just took him out anyways. There's going to be a natural human emotion like, oh, you know, why did he do that? And, you know, feel this pity. But we have to understand that God does in fact use people to carry out his wrath. And so when you get evil people in the elite taking out some of their own members, it's not to say that one was godly and the other was not. It's that they're both storing up wrath for themselves. And when the enemy is using people against one another, um, God will permit you know, them to do these things to one another. Again, because they've stored up this wrath for themselves. Again, it's not God actually commissioning the evil, but they store it up for themselves and he permits them to go amongst their self-destructive ways. Now, those first two examples are where these conspiracy things and Illuminati things you suck you back into the world. But these next three examples show that if you're only focused on the subject matter that a person is talking about, and you really like them for that subject matter, and you follow them for that subject matter, uh, if you trust them based on that, they can lead you into false Christs. So the first one here is Jim Carrey. He went on the Jimmy Kimmel comedian show and just started talking about the Illuminati and the all-seeing eye and made some jokes talking about the all-seeing tongue. And so naturally, all the conspiracy websites said, hey, he's exposing the Illuminati. He's trying to tell us that it's real. And see, he's framed for his girlfriend's death. Now they're really coming after him, similar to Anthony Bourdain, similar to Michael Jackson. Now he's becoming somewhat of a, of a martyr, even though he hasn't died yet. But here's here's the risk here. And so people start to trust him. Like, oh, look, he's going out on a limb. He's doing a service for us. He's trying to warn us. And the next thing you know, Jim Carrey accepts, quote unquote, Christ, but it's a false Christ. And so if you've established a trust for him because the fact that he's, quote unquote, exposing the Illuminati and you see, oh, he's turned to Christ and you're not a Christian yet, you're going to follow him and say, wow, you know, uh, Christianity is the way, and then you're going to get into this Christ consciousness that Jim Carrey is prom promoting, this very weird New Age Christ, which is a false Christ, and it doesn't lead to salvation. Another good example as it applies to music, this was a really controversial topic. Christian singer Lauren Daigle was confronted about homosexuality, whether it's sin or not, and she said, I can't say one way or the other, I am not God. She came under a lot of heat for that. So basically, she was set up with that question and a lot of people said you know you're being unfair to her they really just pinned her in a corner and she didn't know what to say you know if you were in the same circumstance you might have biffed on that question but I'm not so sure because then she went on a radio show and they asked her you know what her style of music is and you know is she a Christian artist or are you just a musician or are you just a regular artist and she basically said she doesn't really want to be identified as a Christian artist and so she's really turning away from her roots. And again, if you've only known Lauren Daigle for her music and you just, you know, you quote unquote feel the spirit when you listen to her music and you think about, oh, wow, she's such a great Christian. She's filled with so much love and so much power in her voice. And then you start listening to her doctrine. You have a tendency to potentially trust her in that and she can lead you into a false Christ, the one that is okay with homosexuality, the one that just says love is love. Again, if only your focus is on, you know, something that is of subject matter that is not Christ himself. And finally, the best for last, Rob Skiba. Rob Skiba is known across the internet for being one of the biggest proponents and most well-known proponents for the Flat Earth community. Now, me personally, a lot of people are going to ask this question, so I might as well get it out of the way. I've never spoken on Flat Earth, and I don't intend to. I've seen cases for and against heliocentric versus Flat Earth from both a scriptural and a scientific perspective. Some of them are good arguments, some of them are bad arguments, but I choose not to get involved in this because I see it creating a lot of division. Again, and the nature of this video, I am more concerned with making sure that people are on a solid and firm foundation in Christ so that they're not deceived. And so now we turn our attention back to Rob Skiba. If you are really big into Flat Earth, you know Rob Skiba, and you're probably highly enlightened 
by everything that he's sharing and you take him as such a good teacher and such a trustworthy teacher. And when you've established that trust with him, what happens when he starts to shift his focus to Christ, the nature, the character, the deity of Christ? Are you going to transition that trust that you had for him on flat earth and bring that into the realm of who he thinks Jesus is? Because if you do that, he is leading you into false Christ because he himself, and if you've followed my channel for a while now, he himself is a huge proponent of following Torah. I mean, just check this out. He doesn't hide it at all. It's all over his Facebook page. He says, every author of scripture, yes, including Paul, says the same thing about Yahweh's instructions, yet, quote-unquote, Christians today say and do something very different. It is only disobedience to Yahweh's loving instructions that bring death. Obedience brings life and shows love. So, in short, if your, quote-unquote, Jesus has taken you away from Yahweh, his commandments, his Sabbaths, and the rest of his ways, then to be perfectly blunt, you are guilty of idolatry and are worshiping a different God. So he's basically saying you're going to go to hell if you do not follow the Torah and you're following a false Christ. Just taking another look at one of these posts, just so much mockery and a spirit of pride. It says, if you honestly believe Yahweh's perfect Torah law instructions were so burdensome, a weight no one could bear, which only brought death, and that no one could keep, then you have to believe that all Old Testament prophets were on crack or possibly much heavier drugs. I mean, those dudes had to have been stoned out of their mind, higher than a nimbus cloud, because all you see them constantly doing is trying to get Israel back under that alleged bondage again and again. And wow, what does that say about Yahweh? Yikes. Perhaps it's time for quote-unquote Christianities to seriously rethink what they believe about Yahweh and his Torah. So again, guys, this, this very last subject is incredibly important. Because flat earth is so prevalent on the internet right now. And I've heard from so many people say that I got saved because of flat earth. And I don't, I'm not saying that I deny that. But I want you to put the puzzle pieces together here. Lots of people are saying that they now believe in Christianity because of flat earth. And so just imagine this. You are not a Christian. But you're researching flat earth. And it leads you to Christ. And you're like, oh, wow, the Bible is real. Christ is real. I need to go to him to my salvation. Naturally, one of the teachers, one of the people that gave you the data or gave you the assurance that flat earth is true is Rob Skiba. And because you're a brand new Christian, who know, you know, are you going to accept him as now a good biblical teacher? Because if you are, well, now he's leading you down the road of death, to follow the old Mosaic law instead of the law of liberty, the law of the Spirit, which is plastered all over the New Testament, something that I've talked about at nauseum on this channel. Um, for any of those people who don't really know why Torah leads to death, I'll put all the links in the YouTube description if you want to read about it or watch about it. But you see that the major risk here, and I've talked with um, Nathan at Flat Earth Doctrine YouTube channel, and he sees it as well. He says, you know, there's a lot of good Bible-believing Christians that are in the Flat Earth movement, and I agree with that. I have friends that do and don't believe in Flat Earth, and I treat them all as brothers and sisters in the Lord. And Nathan said, you know, I'm really trying to combat this because the Flat Earth movement, there is a ton of Torah followers in it, just a ton. And he just feels like they're trying to infiltrate or the enemy is using them to infiltrate this doctrine um, to discredit it. And so he's doing his own part to talk about, or talk against, rather, Skiba and Torah observance or obedience. And um, again, you, you see this real risk here. You know, you focus on something, whether it's biblical or not biblical, just a subject matter at hand, and you focus on that, and you find a good teacher on that, and you start to develop a trust and a relationship with that person, and you don't really care to see what they think about Christ, and then after that trust is built up, and they do start to talk about their quote-unquote Christ, hopefully it's the right one, but a lot of times, as I've just showed you, it's not. Are you susceptible to believing in a false Christ? And I think, yes, highly possible. 
And so that is why on my channel, I really want to have a lot of more ministry videos. It's not to say that I won't do a conspiracy video here and there, you know, every once in a while or focus on end times or focus on prophecy. It's that the focus and the cornerstone of everything in this ministry will be Christ-centered and trying to protect you against all the false doctrine. And then on the side, if there's things that interest me, I'm going to basically share those things as well. But we need to be Christ-centered because, as I said in my last video, that is the only thing that pro uh, protects you, rather, from all the deception that's currently occurring all around us. And remember, the Bible says that there will be so many deceptions that even the elect can be deceived. And so we just really have to be focused on the Word of God and focus on abiding in Christ and praying for our protection in Him. And that's all I got to say about that. But I, I mean, I just really hope you all see the real dangers here. So appreciate your comments. This is Mike with On Point Preparedness. God bless everybody.